basketball coach Kenny Brooks. Kenny, uh, congratulations on the the new job and welcome to Lexington. Matt, I really appreciate it. I tell you, I'm excited and I can't wait to get to work. You know, uh, when your name sort of first popped up on this, and I, I think I put out that you guys were, were that you were a candidate. I was amazed, Kenny. I've been doing this a long time at the universal praise that I heard, like the amount of people that wrote me and go, "Man, if Kentucky gets this guy, you all would be fortunate." Like the, the just the amount of universal support you ha- you you had. And it's got to make you feel good that since you've kind of been announced here, just how much positive energy has happened already. It, it is. It's always great to be wanted. And, uh, you know, this is a situation that, you know, I wasn't looking for, to move. Uh, but when it presented itself, you know, I just felt like it was a wonderful opportunity because I think UK is a sleeping giant in women's basketball. And uh, there's a, there's a, there can be a lot of life put into it. And so I was just so excited. And then obviously to – hear the praise or hear, you know, at what everyone was thinking. It makes you feel great. It makes you feel wanted. And it just it puts excitement into it because you can go in there knowing that people will back you and they just want to win her. Well, let me talk to you about that. You, you said both in your press conference and now, UK women's basketball is a sleeping giant. That's the phrase I've heard you use a few times. Why do you say that? Well, the name brand. When you think about Kentucky, you think about basketball. And obviously on the men's side, there's been tremendous success in the past. For years, and uh, and so I think that's just synonymous with women's basketball as well. If you put the right effort into it, uh, I remember when we were at Virginia Tech uh, two years ago, we played Kentucky in the Bahamas, and I think we were ranked top ten at the time. And when we beat them, it was a great feeling because we felt like we beat a name brand team. And uh, so I, I think with the resources that are available, the renovations to Memorial, uh, obviously with the landscape of college athletics is changing and you want to align yourself with the best conferences, uh, I think that we give ourselves a chance to win. And, you know, with the fan support, I played here. uh, I can't remember. I coached here against um, Kentucky and Memorial, and the fan base was just unbelievable. They were were loud. They were knowledgeable. And I think we can get that going again, and it's a sleeping giant, and it's been ready to be awakened. Yeah, you know, I was going to say it was a few years back with uh, with Matthew Mitchell. There was a period here that it was rolling. I mean, they they yeah. went to the tournament, lost to UConn a number. Or we're in UConn's bracket a few times when UConn was crushing everybody. But I mean, Drew and I went to an Elite Eight game up there mm-hmm. against UConn in in, uh, in Connecticut. So it was rolling, and the crowds were rolling. How do you get back to that? Because I went to some of those games. Early in the Don Staley years with South Carolina, wild atmospheres. Do you think – how do you get back to that? Well, I think first and foremost you have to recruit, uh, you know, right type of, of young ladies, kids who are going to connect with the community. Uh, that's something that we did at Virginia Tech. You know, when I, when I first got there, we were getting 1,000 people at the games. And we went out and we recruited kids to our, to our program, to the university. Uh, they represented extremely well in the, in the public but also on the court. And, uh, and we made it personable. I mean, we made them personable to the, to the fan base, made them accessible to the fan base, and, uh, and then there became a connection. And then, of course, you have to win. You know, you have to get great players in there who are going to win. And then, you know, my last few years at Virginia Tech, and especially the last year, I think we sold out seven or eight games, and we were getting 9,000 people regularly. And, uh, and I think it's, it has to be a concentrated effort. Uh, you have to go out and get the right types of people that are going to represent. And then when you do that and you add that with winning, I think it's going to really, really uh, you know, just, just energize the fan base uh, because I think that they're ready to be energized. And then you can put out a great product. Drew and I were talking about we love the video where you saw the practice floor for the first time. And you were like, this is ours? I mean, so the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> facilities here, you've been everywhere. How does Kentucky's facilities, specifically for the women's side, how do they compare to where they need to be to compete with the teams we're going to be watching play over the next weekend? You know, now, you know, with the renovations with Memorial, uh, all the pictures look fantastic. It, it's a perfect arena for women's basketball. You know, um, I've never seen a women's basketball game in Rupp, but I, I can imagine that even if you get, you know, 6,000, 7,000 people, you're going to feel empty because it's a 21, 22,000 seat arena. And uh, th- this one feels great. It's a great size. Uh, throughout the ACC, we played one of the best arenas I've played in uh, was NC State's arena. 
And I, they only had, I think, 5,500, 6,000 people, but it sold out every night. Yeah, I've been in and that building. Was, That's was, a great building for a game, yeah. yeah. Great building. Great, great building, lots of history, and it just feels good. You know, Carmichael at UNC, it just feels great. And I think Memorial has that same type feel where you're going to feel a really connection with the, uh, with the fans. And uh, that will give you a home court advantage. And then, you know, you look around and, you know, just also the renovations to the locker room. They mirror the men's locker room. Uh, the spaces are very are, are very similar, and I think that just really puts it puts you at an advantage because you know kids they do want to see some bells and whistles when they come through, you know, and you know along with the facilities and the NIL opportunities, I think those are very very important, just as important as uh, anything else. Obviously, education you're going to push first, but it's a changing landscape, and uh, the, I think the facilities are really going to help us recruit talented young ladies to come to Kentucky. All right, so let's talk about that landscape because we know for men's basketball, we've spent a lot of time on it. We know for men's basketball what NIL and the transfer portal have done to the sport. You see it and who's in the final four this year. Tell me how NIL transfer portal has worked in women's basketball, and I think a big part of success on the men's game is who's adapted quicker. How do you adapt quickest on the women's side? I tell you, it it is – it's a mirror image of what the men's programs are going through. I mean, maybe, maybe a year behind. And okay. I'll tell you the change. Last year, uh, the NIL opportunities were not as abundant as they are now. Uh, it's changed the way you recruit. Uh, it changes every, the way that you have to have your philosophy. And uh, it's a very important thing. And, uh, and that's one of the things that, that drew me to Kentucky was the commitment uh, through the NIL opportunities, uh, because you have to have it. You know, we have a tremendous, tremendous collective in Club Blue NIL, um, and I think that that's going to really help us be in the ballpark. You know, you look at the teams who are in the Final Four, and especially the ones uh, that are from the SEC, their collectives are very, very important to that program. And uh, a lot of people are still adjusting to the NIL. I think it's a necessary adjustment if you want to be competitive, especially in this league and nationally. And that's something that just really has come to the forefront. Uh, as I have gone recruiting in the portal now, um, you know, that is, that is a subject that comes up very, very quickly in the conversation. And so I, sometimes it is like, it's the first thing. Yeah, I'm sure that's true. So I, and, and, uh, I, I I'm sorry, go ahead. I mean, to cut you off. No, well, well and, and I just, I do. I, I think that, you know, Kentucky, you know, everyone is very passionate about the sport. And uh, th- these are opportunities for these young ladies that they really are going to look for. And we need all the support we can get. And uh, we want to be one of the best players in the, uh, in the SEC. We've got to be at the forefront of the NIL collectives because it is very, very important uh, at the moment. And if you don't adjust, I don't know if you're going to be able to be into the game. So, you know, on the one hand, it's hard because of what you've talked about. But on the other hand, it might be easier to transform a roster than it would have been a few years ago because you can go get players. So how do you best set yourself up to produce a really competitive roster next year? Yeah, you're so right. Uh, when I when I got the job at Virginia Tech, it was a different world eight years ago. Every transfer that you got, they had to set out a year. And so you basically had to you know take the roster that you had. And so – but the transfer portal, it gives freedom to kids on both sides. You know, there, there's several kids in the portal from UK. Um, and then there's also kids in the portal who are looking for different opportunities. So I think what, what I've learned in the last couple of years, yes, you have to, you have to be diligent and yet, but you have to do your homework and you have to go into the portal and you can't just take somebody by their stats. You have, you have to, you have to vet them. You have to see what type of player they are, what, what they really want out of their next experience. And then uh, you have to go in and decide, now, not only by their basketball prowess, but, okay, are they going to be a good teammate? Are they going to be willing to sacrifice? Are they going to be willing to celebrate in each other's successes? And that's where we've had success uh, at Virginia Tech. You know, we went into the portal, and we had a couple of transfers that helped us get to the Final Four. And they were, they were the most humble kids who came in and just wanted to be a part of something. So I think that you can really, um, you know, transform your roster into a winning roster immediately uh, but it's going to take a lot of help from NIL and it's going to take a lot of uh, hard discussions through the portal and then you're going to have to get the right type of players to come in if you can do that I think that you have a chance to to win immediately but all those things have to come into order 
Now, you may I, – I, I apologize in advance. You may not be able to talk about this because I don't know, to be quite frank with you, what the rules are anymore because of what things are. So, if you can't, just say that to me. But is there – do you expect anyone that was with you at Virginia Tech to uh, join you here? Um, you know, I really can't talk about that. Okay, and that's it's fine. obviously uh, – yeah, just obvious situation that, you know, we'll wait and see, you know, who is available and who's not. But I, once I left Virginia Tech, uh, you know, other than the seniors who are, you know, exhausted their eligibility, I haven't been able to speak with anyone. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and, and so, um, you know, we'll, we'll just – you know, my, my focus is right now on, on what we have right now on our roster and then trying to continue through the transfer portal. All right, last question, I'll get you out. I, I think one of the things that I heard people in Blacksburg, because, again, I think one of the biggest testaments to you is how many people in Blacksburg were writing me who I don't even know saying, you guys <laughs> got, like, a great dude. Everyone continued to say – a big thing to you was being a part of the community and like being a part yeah. of, of sort of that you thought that was a key part to the success. I assume you have that same vision here. And how do you see yourself sort of doing that? Well, you have to make yourself available, um, you know, to, to each and every person, you know, whether they like what you do, what you don't, um, and just be visible, you know, be visible. I want to be a part of the community. I've been a part of the community in Blacksburg for a very long time. And, uh, you know, you can come up to me in Kroger and, and talk to me and I'm going to talk back, you know, and I think that's very, very important because once you make yourself personable to the fan base, not only just your players, but also the coaches, uh, they feel a part of the, of the, of the program. And that's something that we've done. I've done it at James Madison when I was there, I did it at Virginia tech and I plan to do that again, uh, at Kentucky and I just think that's the way you build a program. You know, you can't run and hide. You want to be out there in the forefront, you know, and, uh, and then good times will come, you know, because people will stick with you because they believe in you. And that's the way, that's the way it happened. You know, it didn't happen overnight, but it happened at Virginia Tech. And, uh, and it, it was a tough decision, but it was going to take something, you know, magnificent like Kentucky to pull me away. Well, we uh, here at KSR are – here for whatever help we can give you. And I'm looking forward to uh, to coming, give, getting back out and going to the games. Good luck to you. I'm, uh, you ever been, I know Keeneland's coming. You ever been to a horse race? Are you a horse guy? I, you know what? I, I went up to a horse farm and, uh, you know, I, I got to see uh, what life is good. And oh, uh, yeah. I wanted no parts. Of, I wanted no parts of feeding him, but my wife was able to. She <laughs> loves horses. And so she fed him, uh, fed him a peppermint. I stood off in the back, you know, while they took pictures. So you, you won't see me in those pictures. But I'm excited, excited for new opportunities and to learn a lot, a lot of new things. So if anyone has any uh, suggestions for me, you know, have them come out there and give them to me, and I'm looking forward to it. All right. Well, Kenny, thank you very much. Good luck, and uh, congratulations. I know we're looking forward to seeing how you do. Thank you very much, Matt. I appreciate it.